Welcome, Mr. Warrior here. Sure, service. How are we doing today? Hey, hey, hey. Yes, liking that bumper music in the background. Makes me want to move with the music. Well, it is my friend. Today is another math video, and we have a lot of work to do here. We have uh, Mr. Snail here. He's our feature animal of the day. Oh, yes, it's your moment to shine, you slimy little thing. <laughs> Just kidding. Hey, no offense. You know what? I have eaten you though before. Oh my goodness, have you ever had escargot? Mmm, delish, my friends. Delish. Well, I'm gonna say, we are doing, as you can see here, we're doing lesson 4.8 of Go Math. And let's go ahead and zero in on our topic here. <gasps> no pun intended. Yes, it's zeros in the product. What a coincidence. Our essential question says, how do you know you have the correct number of decimal places in your product? And that essential question, not only is that guiding us through this wonderful math lesson that you guys love, but you know what else it's doing? It is actually guiding us to make sure that when we answer that essential question, we are using like a language frame. That we're actually responding to that question using a complete sentence if you know what i mean like you know like a like a complete like like all right okay i'm sorry i was mocking you guys just a little bit hey adults are starting to speak the same way now with like and it's like like oh well let's get on with the lesson shall we what do we have here we have unlock the problem let's unlock it there's their key all right it says connect when decimals are multiplied, the product may not have enough digits to place the decimal point. In these cases, you may need to write additional zeros as placeholders. Okay, we'll look at that again as we're working our problem. Students are racing typical garden snails and measuring the distance the snails travel in one minute. I bet that's a lot of fun. Chris's snail travels a distance of, hmm, look at that. 0.2 foot, right? Two tenths of a foot. Now, Jamie's snail travels, aren't you famous, Jamie? Snail travels one, I'm sorry, 0 0.4 times as far as Chris's snail. How far does Jamie's snail travel? <laughs> okay, uh, it's kind of a comical problem here we're thinking about. Well, let's think about it. It says, using the given information, describe what you are being asked to find. Okay, I like that. Question here says, how far does Jamie Snail travel? Based on this information, we're, we're trying to find out how far Jamie Snail is going to travel, but we really need to find what 0.4 times Chris's speed of his snail, which was two tenths, to determine the distance Jamie Snail will travel. Does that make sense? That's what I'm going to write here. I'm going to write, I need to find what 4 tenths times 0.2 is, okay, to, so I can determine what the distance of Jamie, the distance that Jamie Snail is going to travel. Let me write that down. And you can note here that I put there, I need to find 4 tenths of, and I put of again or times. I want you to remember that times, that uh, operation sign there does mean of, all right, and the 2 tenths foot to determine the distance Jamie's snail travels. Okay, so here now is the step one, which is we're going to go ahead and multiply uh, as with whole numbers. And they have an example of that. They do. 2 times 4 equals 8. And then it says determine the position of the decimal point in the product. Okay, since tenths are being multiplied by tenths, the product will show, and in this case, the product is going to show hundredths because we have two decimal places. So here we have one tenth, there's another tenth, and keep in mind that that's one over 10, and this is one over 100. So by multiplying a tenth and another tenth, it's actually going to give us a hundredth. Now step three says, place the decimal point. Are there enough digits in the product to place the decimal point? And looking at that, I can see here, here's one place value, here's two place values, one plus one, okay, or two place values. Well, with just eight, I, I'm not able, see here, I have one decimal place here and the second one here, so I need two. So I put one, but look, there is another digit there, and I need one there. 
Well, I always kind of like to, if I do my little loop-de-loops, as I call them, do a loop-de-loop, -loop. <laughs> whatever. So loop-de-loop, -loop, here's one and there's two. So I could put a zero in there, okay? And of course, I don't know if I'm gonna have enough room here. We always like to put that zero in front of that decimal point as a reminder that there is a decimal point there. It's not required. How, explain how you know when you to write zeros in a product to place a decimal point. This is kind of keying in with our language uh, frame or our essential question, which is how do we know? Well, in this case, we know by the fact that if we have one place value, two place values here, that we have to insert those two place values in the product. And if I only have one digit or I don't have enough digits, then that's when I know I need to put in a zero. So here, then we would say here, basically, uh, are there enough digits in the product to place? No, there weren't enough. Remember, we had to add a zero. Right zeros is needed to the left of the whole number product to place the decimal point. Okay, so Jamie Snell travels a distance of, and now we can put our 0 0.08 foot, right? And again, hers was much faster. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, wasn't that snail just up there? He was. Boy, he got down here already? That's pretty fast. My goodness. And I know there's probably some of you are looking at your paper going, you know, Mr. War, that's not the snail I have on my page. I'm like, really? Why? Are you saying that maybe you have a snail under the other snail? Ah! Hey. <laughs> I know. Quite a magic trick, huh? Boy, Mr. War, yeah, keep that up, and you might not have to teach anymore. You could do stand-up magic, right? No. Okay, yeah, all right, very funny. Yes, next page, please, before Mr. War totally loses it. Okay, now we have an example, multiply money. Are you still behind there? All right, now I'm getting suspicious. Multiply, it says two tenths, all right, times 30 cents. Multiply, as with whole numbers, think, okay? The factors are 30 hundredths and two tenths. That is true. What are the whole numbers you will multiply? All right, we're going to be multiplying whole numbers. So the two whole numbers we're going to have is 30 and 2. We're going to be multiplying those two. All right. Determine the position of the decimal point in the product. Since hundreds are being multiplied by tenths, the product will show, in this case, it's going to be thousands. So I'm going to do my 30 times 2, which is 60. And now I have 30 cents times 2 tenths. Here we have zero, six, and then here we have a zero, zero, six, zero, and all the rest down below here are just zeros. If we were to multiply across here, so I'm gonna just leave that blank. So I basically have, that number doesn't make a lot of sense. Ah, but we have one, two decimal places in that factor, one decimal place. So we have a total of three decimal places I always like to call that kind of three decimal places or like three powers of 10. It's really important we understand that our numbering system is in the base 10. And now we just need to. And in, in essence, what we multiplied here was by 100. And here, we multiplied by 10. That means we, really we multiplied by 1,000. I kind of like to see it this way. So now I'm going to go ahead and come over here and I'm going to divide by 1,000. It's like I'm going to reinsert my decimal point. So I have 1, 2, 3. And now I have a decimal point that's right here. Now what's interesting about this particular problem, see we have 0 0.060. Typically when we write a decimal, we can leave that zero off, especially when we're dealing with money. Money, we only go up to the hundreds place. As you guys know, there's 100 pennies in $1. So we tend not to write the thousands place on there. It has no value. We usually round to the hundreds place when we're dealing with money. All right, so it's going to be 6 cents. Okay, and what that is really saying is two tenths of 30 cents. Place the decimal point. Write zeros to the left of the whole number product as needed. Since the problem involves dollar and cents, what place value should you use to show cents? Oh, that's what I was just saying a little while ago. I didn't see that coming. So then that's going to be hundreds. And we just, we just said that, right? So two tenths times 30 cents then is six cents. So I'm going to put my money sign here, put my zero, and then zero, six. That's it. All right. Last one here. Find the product. Last little section. Now we have two tenths times five hundredths. And in this case, uh, I'm going to go ahead and 
say, well, I need my, my whole number part. So it looks like I have a 5 times a 2. Those are the digits I see up there, right? And that's 10. Let's go ahead now and multiply our 5 hundredths and our 2 tenths. And in this case, we're really not that interested in lining up the decimals. We simply line up the digits. Now I have 10. Now this is 2 times 0, which is 0. So I'm adding the 1. Sometimes that will mess people up. And then there's 0. And now since this other digit here, uh, here is actually the 1's place, is going to make that all 0. We're going to leave it blank. Nothing more. Now, let's go ahead and look at, we have two decimal places here. So I almost like multiplying by 100. Here to get that decimal is by multiplying by 10. Now you can see we have 1,000. So I need to go three zeros in. I need to divide by 1,000. 1, 2, 3. And we see here that now we end up with 0 0.010. Zero. In this case, we don't have money. There aren't any dollar signs. So we'd want to represent that number. So what steps did you take to find the product? Let me think back. First, what I did was I went ahead and multiplied the numbers, the digits here, as if they were whole numbers. So I went ahead and multiplied my decimals, two of them. I determined that there were three decimal places here. And after determining there were three decimal places, I went ahead and inserted in the product the same number of decimal places. Or in this case, if I had to multiply by 1,000 to remove the decimals, which in essence brings us back to a whole number. Then I would divide by 1,000, and you can see that loop-de-loop. -loop. One, two, three loop-de-loops went in there. Okay, I went ahead and inserted a zero in front of the decimal point. So let me go ahead and write those notes down here. It says here, first, I multiplied the whole numbers, 5 and 2, to determine what the product was. And then I went ahead and multiplied the decimals by lining up the digits rather than the decimal point, or points, probably should say. There we go. And then last... I counted the number of decimal points in the factors and inserted, and of course, moving left because we were multiplying, which moves the decimal to the right. Dividing moves it to the left. And, uh, and I put the same amount or the same number of, there we go. So I fixed that. I think that covers explain why the answer to try this can I have a, can, can have, can have a digit with a place value of hundreds or thousands and still be correct. Okay, a little typo here. I'm not sure what they're really asking here. Can you have can you have a digit with a place value of hundreds or thousands and still be correct? Yeah, I suppose this number here, if they're talking about here, I'd understand that to mean you could this could be stated as one hundredth by dropping off the zero here. Or you could state the problem as ten thousandths. So having difference, is that what they mean? I think so. And I would say, yes, that's true. Okay, well, my friends, yes, my jungle friends, my snail buddies, yeah. <laughs> well, I would have to say this video has come to a close. It's been great presenting another lesson from Nomad. Now, my friends, live long and prosper.